Bull alien. Alien and a... And a bull. Anyway, E3 happened this past week, that one time of year, that one special week of the year where the video game industry can pat itself on its back and pretend that all the abuses that occur within it don't happen. Which really just makes it any other week, if we're being perfectly honest with ourselves. But, as we do every single year, we look at the winners and the losers. Who won E3? Who lost E3? Well, today we are going to find out, because it is time to learn the winners and the losers. It's really not that difficult to work out, the, the, the central conceit of this. Winners and losers. <laughs> Alright, yes, winner number one, 2020. Oh, man. If you only saw E3 highlights, you could be forgiven for thinking that video games were cancelled until next year. Pretty much all the big announcements made at this year's show were for games that remain quite a long ways off, providing 2020 release dates for almost everything of note. In particular, March of 2020 is playing host to a ludicrous number of major titles, including Final Fantasy VII Remake, Watch Dogs Legion, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Some of these dates may change, now they're out in the open and crowding around a single month, but given that something similar happened this past February and all the publishers stuck to their guns, who even knows? Gotta get them out before the end of the fiscal year, right folks? Cyberpunk, Avengers, Dying Light 2, No More Heroes 3, whatever month they drop, a huge number of the games shown this year are pitching themselves for next year. This makes 2020 one of E3 2019's biggest winners. 2020 is, in fact, the Epic Games Store of Years, since it's getting all the games to the disappointment of the rest of us. Still, I'd rather companies take the time to make their games rather than rush out crunched, unfinished hack jobs. Not that any amount of delaying could guarantee they won't be. Anthem. Loser. Ubisoft. Oh, Ubisoft. Ubisoft was fuck awful this year. I mean, every year they're always the most boring. The one year I attended their show as a live audience member, James Cameron took the stage for what felt like 45 minutes to yammer on and on and on about how great his shitty Avatar film was and hype up an Avatar game that I'm pretty sure only I ever actually played. If you can believe it, it was even more rubbish than the film. Maybe it wasn't even released, maybe it was just sent to me as a joke at my expense. This year, Ubisoft didn't have Aisha Tyler to fall back on, nor a coked up Mr. Caffeine. They did have John Berthnall, who walked out with a dog and proceeded to ignore said dog so he could run his mouth about one of roughly 15 Tom Clancy games they were showing. Most of the shit they talked up was Tom Clancy nonsense to the point where I lost track of where one game reveal ended and another began. And I'm not saying that just to be snotty, I do genuinely mean it, I lost bloody track. And hardly any of it was gameplay. This was a running theme throughout E3 2019, but Ubi was especially lousy with pre-rendered Garbo trailers that showed off nothing of actual substance. They couldn't even show much gameplay for The Division 2, and that game is already out. Then there was the Just Dance dancing like last year. So fucking bad in 2018 they decided to bring it back, probably literally because it was so poorly received last year. Anything to become a meme these days, right? I mean, look at this desperate shit.
This is truly Trump's America. About the only good thing they had was Watch Dogs 3 because you can play as a bunch of old lady hackers and murder fashy wankers with robot facehuggers. I'll admit though, that is a hell of a sales pitch. They did well there. Winner, Devolver Digital. Again. Obviously. Obviously, Devolver Digital wins again this year. Once more parodying the game industry with aggressive hype rank learning the Struthers in tow, Devolver's Adult Swim rivaling press conference this year took aim at an E3 lacking in live conferences, as publishers present their own self-hosted live streams. With a setup mimicking a Nintendo Direct, Devolver took swipes at the Epic Games Store, announced a goddamn real-life Enter the Gungeon arcade game for actual arcades, and introduced an overarching villain for the bizarrely compelling storyline they've built over three years of shows. I was worried Devolver wouldn't be able to pull off the same joke three years in a row, but then a tentacle punched its way out of a man's chest and I realised everything was going to be okay. Devolver showed off some damn cool games alongside its gory fuck-laden mess fest, such as Carrion, Full Guy's Ultimate Knockoff, and a bunch of official bootleg versions of Devolver's own library, which is just wonderful really. As well as giving a platform to smaller games that need and deserve the attention, Devolver has a place in my heart for being the only publisher to say, in its own deliciously snide way, yes we see it too, we see what a bollock monger the industry has become. That kind of reinforcement from a fucking company no less is always kind of nice. Now just don't fuck it up one day Devolver. Yeah? Yeah. Loser! Hecklers! Hecklers! Download free tonight and give it a try. Nobody could have expected Keanu Reeves to show up at E3 this year, except of course Keanu Reeves and everyone who knew Keanu Reeves was going to show up at E3 this year, but since he's appearing in Cyberpunk 2077, he made a shocking, headline-grabbing appearance at Microsoft's show. The moment was made even more memorable when someone took the opportune time to yell at him during his pitch. Okay, but let me tell you, the feeling of of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. The heckle was well-timed, charmingly executed, and a genuine cute moment, and the heckler has since been rewarded with a collector's edition of Cyberpunk. As a self-contained story, that is fine. But the problem with rewarding hecklers is that well, people are gonna heckle expecting a reward, and unfortunately this one moment was followed up with an E3 full of dumb assholes trying to get their own moments in the spotlight. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Well, once in tactical mode, you can choose to perform various abilities. To present more. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Namura-san. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We are. In <laughs> Hello, E3. <laughs> You've just. <laughs> Jesus! As a one-off, spur-of-the-moment thing, the Keanu heckle hit at the right time with the right retort. It was spontaneous, it was unexpected, and that's what made it work. Screaming idiotically for the whole duration of a conference is obnoxious idiocy. Especially when the best you've got is yelling, take my money at a corporation. Woo-hoo. Well done. Totally fucking original there, mate. No matter how hard you yell, fuckos, ain't no way Square Enix is handing out one of those ridiculously expensive plastic motorbikes. As for Bethesda, whoever that one yelling moron was who shrieked after everything, fucking everything, should have been thrown out on his raucous ass. Thank you. Yeah! And... <laughs> the Elder Scrolls Online has dragons. Yeah! And of course, dragons. Yeah! <laughs> All 
the new players in Tamriel. ESO, the latest chapter. And if if you haven't <laughs> We're leaving. They were yelling their approval for Elder Scrolls Blades for God's sake. Nobody sober or even human should be able to do that. It doesn't help the rumours that that audience was liquored the fuck up pre-show. There was speculation that most of the noise came from Bethesda staff members in the audience, which would explain why they were laughing at Todd Howard's attempt at humour. Literally one single heckler actually won at E3 2019. The rest were undoubtedly massive fucking losers. Winner, Final Fantasy VIII. You know, good for Final Fantasy VIII. Forever stuck in the shadow of its fellow games in the series, notably missing previously from the endless remasters and re-releases of other Final Fantasies, it's nice to see Final Fantasy VIII is finally getting its own fresh coat of paint and looking remarkably better than the original to boot. It's believed Square Enix had lost the source code for VIII at one point, which is why it was missing from the recent Switch ports that included 7, 9, 10 and 12. Nice to know they rooted around the back of the couch and found it. Good going Final Fantasy VIII you plucky little underdog you loser avengers square enix is avengers i have my personal concerns about final fantasy 7 remake and voicing those concerns in the past has always turned out very very well for me we lost how many subscribers greg that's a lot, isn't it, for, for sharing mild scepticism. All that in mind, Square Enix's Avengers game had my curiosity a lot more this year, to be honest, but unfortunately the reveal was littered with disappointments. While there's a lot of promise to the game, and I think we're long overdue more comic book titles given their cinematic success, something about the Avengers just looks off. The game won't be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I'm actually in favour of, but it does ape the entire look and feel of an MCU product, right down to colour palettes and basic costume designs. Character models, however, have been given original looks, which gives them the appearance of cheap knockoffs or stunt doubles. More like Avengers Resemble, right? Res resem Right? If the game had literally any other art style, it wouldn't be a problem. Just look at the cartoony aesthetic of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and how good my boy Mysterio looks! Look at him! Look at him! Oh yes! Look at my top lad Mysterio! This game will be at my beck and call! My beck! My, my Quentin Beck and call- right? Beck and- right? So our promise to the community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. Yeah. And while I was still trying to maintain my hopes for this game, Square Enix revealed the catch. Cause the AAA industry always needs a goddamn catch. After earning cheap and easy applause for declaring there'd be no loot boxes in the game, which would be considered basic human decency, it became more and more apparent that Avengers would be yet another fucking live service with yet another roadmap of content. The usual tired and wearisome talk of supporting the game for years came spewing out from executive mouthpieces and I'm just so tired of it. But launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years with exciting new content released at a regular basis. I'll just fuck off. Just fuck off with this shit already. Just make and sell a fucking game. The live service experiment is derailing, everyone can see it is, and audiences are seeing through your roadmap crap. While they promise new heroes and content will drop free, it just leaves one wondering where the monetization will come in, or even if these proposed years of support will come to pass, because we've heard this support for years crap already, and it's proven itself to almost always be either a lie or a naive promise too unrealistic to keep. Live services are truly the MMO of this generation, and they're stinking up their joint everywhere. Never has my interest in a game dropped so rapidly than it has for Avengers. Sorry video games, but you've yanked my chain one too many times for me to trust you on the service front ever again.
winner. All the little cute indie shit at the Microsoft press conference, all the little games, so cute, so cute. Microsoft probably had the best E3 showing overall, continuing its trend of shutting up and letting the games do most of the talking. While the Xbox house did reveal details about Project Scarlet, its next console with 8K visuals, ooh, and 120 frames per second, ooh, I'll believe that when I see it. None of that caught my eyes quite so much as the bright, colourful, charmingly cartoonish indie games MS was showing off. Spiritfarer looks utterly lovely with exquisite hand-drawn animations and a bipedal mum deer. RPG Time The Legend of Right caught my attention instantly with its unique notebook visual style and an incredible level of detail. It looks like it takes cues from such titles as Kirby's Epic Yarn or Yoshi's Woolly World, but actually does far more ambitious and involved things with the concept. And you know, while fans have been dumping on it a lot, I actually quite like the way Battletoads looks. Fans have furiously torn the art style a new one, so clearly I'm in the minority, but I think it matches the absurdity of the series quite nicely. Plus, it makes a nice visual partner to Streets of Rage 4, which has a similar cartoon feel and is looking so damn good. Wait, what? Craig, what? We're losing how many? For Battletoads? Other indie highlights include The Good Life, which is automatically intriguing because my main man Sweary65 is leading it, Killer Queen Black because I'm a notorious sucker for retro style side scrolling action, and Felix the Reaper because look at that little sweet pudgy skull boy. Microsoft keeps bringing a lot of indie heat, and I'm in favour, at least, of the heat. I'm a little bit more concerned with the fact that Microsoft keeps buying up studios, that always makes me a little bit leery. But I like the look of the games, the industry needs a reprieve from Triple bullshit and audiences need to know alternatives are out there. In that regard, Microsoft did good. Loser? Well, take a wild guess. Who do you think? What do you think I've been waiting for? What do you think I've been saving up as a little treat for myself at the end? And it is, at this point, just for myself. Bethesda. Oh, of course, it's Bethesda. Why wouldn't it be? Look, I know I've been taking a massive shit all over Bethesda lately, like to a near self-parodying degree, but it's not like they're giving me much of a reason not to. Their press conference was a fucking embarrassment, with that aforementioned drunkenly whooping crowd of imbecilic fans squealing, only serving to draw ironic attention to how dismal the whole sorry affair was. Bethesda tried to poke fun at itself in a way that avoided taking any actual responsibility for what a broken, unfinished mess their releases have become of late. They soaked in the applause for doing the bare minimum, promising such groundbreaking fucking features as NPCs, settlements, and choices to Fallout 76, NPCs in Fallout, Fallout content in a Fallout game. I'm amazed they had the sheer fucking nerve to soak in that intoxicated cheering. If they had any actual goddamn decency, they'd have told the audience not to clap for that shit. Not to clap for bottom of the barrel basic standards, fucking cretins. Almost a year later, Almost a year after the game came out, will the game actually have some fallout in it? But it wasn't just that. Bethesda talked mostly about garbage updates to garbage old games having nothing to say about the two in-house titles anyone actually cares about. As to be expected, there was no Elder Scrolls 6 and there certainly wasn't the now fabled Starfield. There wasn't even Garfield. <laughs> I meant by that. Instead, they teased a shitty looking Nickelodeon knockoff version of Commander Keen that ended up being a mobile game because of course it did. Some of the earliest memories of my grandparents, God rest their souls, involves playing Commander Keen on my granddad's computer. I have decided that my grandparents, my beloved, beautiful grandparents, are being disrespected, are having their graves desecrated by Todd fucking Howard, who I've decided to blame for this, even though he probably had nothing to do with it. Todd Howard is taking a hot, relieving piss on my grandmother's grave, and Nana Val was a saint. She was a bloody saint! What a load of yawnsome guff Bethesda's content's turning out to be. Oh, but at least the loot box filled grindy piece of shit Elder Scrolls Blades is coming out on the Switch. There's an announcement that weakens the nation. And who could forget that time they showed us a cutscene for the Elder Scrolls Online, yeah? That was a nice bit of CG. That told us a lot. 
dragons are in the Elder Scrolls Online. Ooh. The only things that bailed Bethesda out were projects that Bethesda isn't making, which says a lot about the company and what it should be doing with itself these days. Ghostwire Tokyo by Tango Gameworks, Death Loop by Arcane Studios, and of course, id Software's fantastic looking Doom Eternal were the only things worth raising your head out of your palms for, and Bethesda isn't making any of them. Yet more evidence that Bethesda should just stick to publishing and leave development to studios that actually know what the fuck they're doing. And don't need an entire fucking year to work out that NPCs should be in a fucking Fallout game, for God's sake. Bethesda doesn't need a press conference at this point. It only highlights how weak they are. Just glom onto the back of a Microsoft one or something. Or just join forces with Ubisoft. Together, the two of you combined might make for a complete show. Just show Watch Dogs then Doom, then fuck off. Before we go, there is a case to be made for a special mention loser, uh, and that is E3 itself. There's no secret the companies are, I guess, less enthused by E3 than they used to be. Uh, Sony, of course, pulled out this year. Uh, the success of the Nintendo Direct uh, has demonstrated that companies can more easily and accurately just get their information out there without the help, without the need for a big trade show. And that's fine by me, because E3 is run by the ESA, the video game industry's bunch of parasitic lobbyists who don't give a fuck about anyone but themselves, and who tried to sell everyone up the river on that Sopa and Pippa thing a few years back. So I really don't care if the ESA suffers any form of setback uh, in any way, shape or form. Uh, so I'm perfectly fine with that. But, but there is no doubt that E3 has diminished somewhat. This year's show overall was a little bit pants. Uh, not all of that, that not really mind blowing. There was nothing that, that had my jaw dropping uh, as there had been in previous years. There was always at least something in years prior, but, but not this year, not this year. And I think the, the, uh, the missing uh, Sony press conference uh, impacted that quite severely. And that's not just because it was Sony. I think if Microsoft had pulled out and Sony stayed, I'd have said the same thing. Uh, having one of them not there uh, had an impact, I feel, on the overall gravitas of the show. So, yeah, the overall loser this year was E3 itself. And if you want an overall winner, I mean, it's going to be Keanu, isn't it? Thank God for me. Thank Keanu for me.